Hello clever people and welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. This is the Q&A for March and April. This Q&A will be a bit different than usual because I have received in March and April a lot of questions. Some of these questions are really interesting and they deserve some level of detail in the answer and a couple of them are definitely worth of a long video. So this is what I'm going to do this month. This Q&A is for generic questions, questions about myself, the line, the editorial line of the channel, and some other miscellanea. Then there will be short videos. Uh, my ambition is being able to do two to three minutes with me not on camera, covering these more detailed technical questions. And then there will be, well, probably a couple of long videos covering the, uh, covering the, 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 the most complicated questions. So, uh, but now with no further ado, let's start with the first question. Ulis says, I like what you are doing. I'm an ex-flight engineer from the Swedish Air Force with 25 years experience. My colleagues have been outside Vegas at Red Flag and they told me that we did very well at the exercise. Very well. Very well. So well that many American officers said, hell, we must have that beep gripping. Well, uh, I um, hope to have a f almost first-hand uh, account of something that has been described in my videos, and it is actually aligned with the mm, witnesses that have been uh, written on the press. So yes, there's definitely much more than meets the eye in the grip. So Ulis, thank you very much for your contribution. Hastings say. Why destroy superb videos with annoying computer music? I am having problems hearing you. Well, I am sorry. Uh, actually, there are two aspects of production that are turning out to be uh, very hard to nail, even because I they have some hardware and software problems with my current configuration, which is definitely poor. But Apart from that, music. So I realized that the volume of the intro was often too high and now it's usually uh, 12 decibels below the max. Then the background music, which I like, I really like. I think it gives more uh, oomph, more atmosphere to the video. I mean, the background music is between 25 and 30 decibels below the level of my voice. And it should be a lot, should be enough for everybody to uh, hear that. I'm, uh, after recording a video, after rendering a video, I normally listen to the video with uh, two or three different devices just to see how it looks and sounds. And it's, it's, it's honestly okay for me. So it would be really useful for me to understand which device you are using. Because I have the suspect that if you're using a cheap phone or some sort of any de device that applies a lot of compression, then that's the problem in the sense that the, the, the different levels between my voice and the music is going to be squashed all together and you won't be listening to me. Probably, I don't know what to do in that case, probably reduce the volume of the background music even more. But okay, we'll see. The first thing that I need to know is what you are using to listen to replicate the problem. Pritam says, there is a saying in the Air Forces all over the world that never ever get a French Mirage or Rafale at your six. What's the story behind this? I'm sorry, first time I hear this, I tried to do a little bit of research. I didn't find any reference to it. So I'm afraid I don't think I can help you. If you heard this from somewhere of your 
could be referenced and you can actually send any sort of reference to me, I'm happy to dig into this. Vince L left a very long comment. What do you think about the stupid myth created by media about F-35 and more recently Sukhoi-57, which is going to enter the operational stage? A lot of stupid stuff has been said about both fighters, which I may agree. We have all seen screws and rivets uh, on the airframe with the prototypes, but we have never seen production airframes. The exact materials of those rivets and the airframe are secret and for a reason. In my opinion, the Sukhoi 57 is the most advanced fifth generation fighter I would ever call 85 plus. Okay, because it has features that I think are going to be present on sixth generation aircraft. As you may know, Sukhoi 57 has multiple radars, the IRCM, active wear monitoring, and of course features from F-35, such as the... Well, I agree that um, about those two planes, there's been a lot of stupid stuff being told mostly because there was some sort of sport-like support around the two fields. What do I believe? I believe that the F-35 is definitely a game changer, a very advanced plane. It is definitely not as advanced as some supporters may think. And in the same way, I think the Sukhoi 57 is not as bad as the detractors have said. In the sense, there's always a middle ground. Um, nobody's stupid, okay? Nobody is stupid. Uh, the Russians are not stupid. The Americans are not stupid or, or naive. There's nothing like that. It's, there are different schools of thought, but what most important, different missions, different ideas, different strategies and tactics, tactics and visions behind that. And that's the way we need to judge and assess every plane, the environment. We need to consider the environment in which the plane is going to operate. Lukman says, which light combat aircraft LCA do you think is currently suitable for the Royal Malaysian Air Force? LCA lift requirements? My friend, I have no idea. Sorry. Agam says, Can you please make more detailed and educative videos? Sorry, I'm not understanding the question. So if you are asking me to do more videos like the ones that I am doing, uh, yeah, don't worry, I'm not going away anytime soon. And this will happen. And thank you very much for your interest. If you are actually telling that my videos are not detailed or educative enough, so please get back in touch and tell me what you think could be improved. I'm really interested to hear your opinion like everybody else's opinion. Felix Marcel says, Where does your knowledge about military aircraft comes from? Talking about the calculus and forces part. A master in aerospace engineering. Um, I served in the Italian Air Force. I many, many years ago, I spent a short uh, stint of my career in the aerospace industry. And after that, I went on a different route. Today, I'm working in basically IT. So having said that, I am just passionate. <laughs> I've been passionate since, I, since when I was a child. I was passionate about military aviation, jets, fighters, uh, bombers, these kind of things. And in, by extension, I'm passionate about military history, military technology. I think it is very important to understand uh, uh, what is going on and what has gone on in the past. So I'm not really a professional in the area. I can be more considered more a specialized journalist with yeah, some more detailed knowledge in engineering. White Devil says, have you read K 
Kelly More Than My Fair Share of It by Clarence Kelly Johnson or Skunk Works uh, from uh, Ben Rich. If so, what did you think of them? Do you have any book tips or recommendation when it comes to aviation? So yes, I read those books. They are absolutely fascinating. Uh, honestly, if I if someone asked me where would you like to have born again in history, probably I could answer in a place and a time that gave me the opportunity to enter the skunk works. Because the job that was done there was well outstanding. <laughs> Absolutely interesting, probably maybe second to NASA, but not entirely sure about that. Anyway, so yes, it, they're great books. Um, I really, I really, that really they're, they are a good and interesting and important um, re read for anyone who wants to learn more about modern uh, aviation. If you want a suggestion for me, if you don't want to go into technical uh, books, there are a few so stuff with no equations. Um, I would suggest Chuck Higa's um, autobiography, uh, which again gives a picture of the development of the United States uh, Air Force and its crucially its relationship with the NATO forces and other allies and uh, uh, the, the, the reaction against uh, the, the, the Soviet air forces. So it gives a very large picture of what was happening while he was um, yeah while he was in service with the, with the Air Force. Uh, it's a great book, I probably read it two or three times. The only regret that I have is to have it in the Italian translation, but probably someday I will buy the English one. Serge D says, will become a patron, tried, but stopped uh, when small print said could be international surcharges. Uh, I will look into this as I'm Canadian and what the surcharge is, uh, I can only guess. Normally it's a very small, very, very small uh, surcharge. And if you're using stuff like PayPal or things like that, it's basically negligible. But this question gives me the opportunity to say something. These are trying and testing time for the world economy. So, I am the happiest person in the world if you decide to support the channel. Becoming a Patreon, becoming a subscribe star, or whatever. I am the happiest person in the world. But, but, don't do that if you can't. We will have difficult times ahead. Uh, so, think about yourself, your family and everything first. So, don't feel obliged. If you do, I'm the happiest person in the world. If you can't, uh, I'm happy anyway. Don't worry about that, okay? Gurra says, how does it feel to be acknowledged by Saab for your videos about the Yas-39 Gripen? Probably means that I was not exceedingly drunk while I was writing them and doing them. And yes, I'm definitely happy. I consider that a badge uh, that I would like to put on my on my jacket. But yeah. And by the way, thank you very much, guys from Saab. Okay, this is everything for the Q and A. But I remind you, this was just for the generic questions. There will be probably small videos coming out in the coming weeks with all the questions. And meanwhile, well. Thank you very much for watching, stay safe and see you next time.